Dear human friends, My dog friend Lassie has made my first Halloween really amazing. What made it really exciting was a story that Milo the B12 told all of us at Pemberton Goods Yard one night. He told the story of a scary dog that terrorized the whole town into abandonment. Of course, Max didn't believe the story and called us all silly for believing it, but he soon got his comeuppance. This story will tell you how it happened. Sincerely, Bambi, the Young Prince. audio story written by the NPRRE2 narrated by me Alexander Sai Autumn had come to the furry railways and the cold temperatures were in full swing it was October, meaning the Halloween season was around the corner. Everyone was looking forward to the annual Halloween festival at the big station. Bambi and his friend Lassie the Rough Collie were especially excited. She had told Bambi all about Halloween and how much fun it was, dressing up in costumes and telling scary stories. There was also going to be a spectacular fireworks show to top the event off. Bambi was looking forward to an excellent first time. One warm, dry October evening, Bambi and Lassie were walking home after a long day of exploring. It was starting to get dark, so they were trying to get back as soon as possible. Bambi was starting to get worried. How much farther do we have, Lassie? It shouldn't be that far now. I'm not sure we'll make it back in time, though. Lassie knew Bambi was right. The sun was already setting, and the gloomy darkness of the night was setting in as all light from the sun diminished towards the horizon. Then, the two friends saw that they were near Pemberton Goods Yard. Pemberton. We can stay there for the night. That is, if anyone's there. And, sure enough, Lassie and Bambi saw Max, Ernest, and Milo. The B-12 in the shed chatted. One flight illuminated the shed, providing enough light to guide the animals over. Hey, look at who's here. It's Lassie and her little peanut. Hey, Max, Ernest, Milo. Hello, Lassie. Good to see you again. <laughs> you too, Milo. What you guys doing? Max and I are having a competition to see which story is the scariest. My story was about a Lancaster bomber that crashed into the channel after a raid on Berlin. Some people claim to have seen it refly its last flight. Oh, that's just sloppy talk. My story's better. Mine tells the tale of an engine that was brutally scrapped. However, it still runs down the main line at night, many decades later. Oh, come on! That story's been used many times before. Well, your story with the Lancaster never happened. Besides, you should show some respect to those bomber crews. They've been through a lot during the war. How am I being disrespectful? Take the back of the British people. The two tank engines kept on bickering, shutting down the ambulance of competition. Finally, Milo interjected. All right, that's enough, you two. What are you, over 70 for heaven's sake? And you two are bickering over originality. Well, what about you, old man? You have anything better? Milo looked up to the night sky, then to a red signal shining in the dark, thought of the nearby town at Xavier Forest Station. Then suddenly, at Lassie and Bambi, the old engine smirked and gave a wink at the confused pair. As a matter of fact, I do. Well, come on then. Out with it. Very well. So everyone sat and watched patiently as the B-12 shared his story. A long 
time ago, there once lived the lovely but quiet little town of Rumpage. It wasn't as prosperous, but it was the ideal spot for those living in the big cities for a chance for some time away from the stresses of city life. One day, a happy Belgian couple arrived overseas to visit family that lived in the town. Accompanying them was their female Grotendale, whom they called Ellen. She was, as you'd expect from a role model doll, friendly towards people, obedient, and most of all, good girl. However, one night, when the church bell rang, there was something off about her. When the couple tried to feed her dinner, she growled and snapped her maw. <coughs> then she jumped outside, through the open window, and into the woods. The couple ran after her, crying out her name. Alas, that would be the last time they were ever seen alive. The following morning, when the couple were reported missing, a search party swept the woods. When they eventually found them, all they found were badly mauled and mutilated bodies. They were buried at the church cemetery the very next day. But the story doesn't stop there. A few days later, a farmer was making his way home after a long day of work. As he walked into Bromwich, the church bell rang. The farmer knew it was only the church ringing the bell to mark the hour. Suddenly, he heard a sound that made him stop in his tracks. The howl of a dog. The farmer froze where he stood when he saw on the trees two blood-red eyes staring at him. By the time he regained his composure, it was too late. Something jumped out at the farmer and attacked him. His dying screams pierced the night air as he was pulled to death. As soon as the farmer was finished off, the creature retreated into the woods. The sound of the attack woke the entire town. When the farmer's body was found the next morning, it had the same kind of scratches and injuries that were found on the Belgian couple a few days prior. Then, five more people fell victim to the creature. Those who were lucky to survive claimed to have seen a large, blood-red-eyed black-furred canine letting out a blood-curdling howl just before it attacked. Out of fear, all the townspeople abandoned Bromwich, exactly as it was. To those who have seen her, the creature that terrorized the town would be known as the Bloodhound of Bromwich. Everyone at the sheds didn't say a word. Lassie finally cut the silence. Um, uh, what happened to Ella after the town was abandoned? Well, some say she was killed by the creature, but others say Ella is the creature. And according to legend, at the sound of a church bell ringing late at night, she still roams around, howling where the town still stands, preying upon those who dare step foot in Bromwich. When the railway ran past the town, there was even an instance where an engine's face was badly mutilated, so badly it had to be withdrawn, never to run again. Ernest, Bambi, and Lassie stood frozen in silence, but Max just snorted. <laughs> Scaredy cats. You seriously believe all that? I'm bigger than that mutt. I believe I can overpower it any day. Careful, youngin. You're making the ice you're skating on thinner. 
Oh, yeah. Sure. Then Max dozed off to sleep, leaving the others scowling. What's going on there? Milo, it, it is this a real story? Milo just grinned and winked. Somewhere deep inside, Bambi, Lassie, and Ernest knew Milo's story got Max a little on edge, making him go to sleep so quickly. The next day, Bambi and Lassie were waiting for Ernest to complete his work before he would take them home. They wanted enough time to prepare for the festival later that night. Max was out on a goods run, so Milo and Ernest were the only engines in the yard. The little fawn was still a bit shaken up from Milo's story, and so was his canine friend. Milo noticed this and tried to comfort them. There's nothing to worry about, you two. It's only a story I made up on the spot. Bromwich was never abandoned, and there never was a dog named Ella. So the both of you have nothing to worry about. That made the pair feel better. Then they went off to explore the yard to pass the time. Nearby, Ernest was pushing a line of trucks into a siding. However, the pannier couldn't stop thinking about Milo's story, and then caused him to lose focus. Lassie rounded a corner and saw that Ernest was getting close to the buffers. Whoa, watch it! But it was too late. He hit the buffers with a loud bang! A plank wagon filled with coal cracked open from the impact and spilled right near Lassie. Coal dust flew all over her. When the dust cleared, the collie was covered from head to paws in coal dust. Her fur was roughed up and the dust caused her eyes to be bloodshot, making them bright red. Ernest! Oh. Oops. Lassie, you all right? Uh, yes, I'm fine. Oh my gosh, your eyes. Goodness me, Lassie. You almost exactly look like the Bloodhound. What? Really? Milo's driver climbed down and held up a mirror. Lassie couldn't help but laugh. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> ah, it's the Bloodhound of Bromwich. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Wait a minute. What is it? A wide, devilish smile crossed Ernest's face. I think I have an idea to get back at Max for calling us silly. Ernest then explained his plan in full detail. Everyone thought it an excellent idea. This might work. We'll do it tonight. That night, Max was taking empty wagons to the big station. There were no other trains scheduled, so he was hoping for a nice, non-stop run to be back in time for the fireworks show. The line Max was on ran by. As fate would have it, Bromwich, which of course caused great uneasiness for the Thompson tank. It's only a story. Yes, just a story. There's no such thing as bloodhounds. <laughs> I... I hope. Max rounded a bend just before the tunnel when he saw something that made his heart sink. A red signal. Oh, come on! Not the only train scheduled! Max stopped at the signal and waited. It was very quiet. No other sound was audible, except for the crickets and Max idling. All the while, Max kept glancing at the town's church tower, which was towering over menacingly. What, is the signal in a sleep or something? Suddenly, the sound of a church bell shattered the silence. Max's boiler ran cold as he remembered what the church bell indicated. Max now got anxious and started to beg. Turn green. Turn green now. But the signal stood frozen at red. He then heard the sound of a dog howling. 
Max frantically looked around. He had the feeling he was no longer alone. Then he looked in front of him and saw two red spheres of light next to each other, seeming to be getting closer. Max squinted to get a clearer look. He froze suddenly as he realized the lights weren't lights. They were a pair of blood-red eyes, and they seemed to be staring at him. Max became more frightened when out of the bushes came a large, black-furred canine with fur that was pointy as spikes, and eyes that were red as blood. Its snout buckled as the creature snarled and growled at it. Max violently quivered it right as the canine got closer and closer. No! I've, I've only seen things! I must be! Suddenly, it let out a blood curdling howl. Oh! The blood out! She's after me! Max blasted his whistle the first way as fast as his face would carry him, shrinking in fright. Milo then appeared out of the tunnel and stopped next to the creature. <laughs> you got him running! Nice acting! Ah, uh, it comes naturally to me. <laughs> Come on, let's catch up with him. Much further back, Ernest and Bambi were waiting for the others to come back when Max came blasting in. So what? The bloodhound of Bronwyn! It's real! Really? And I thought you said, Oh, I believe I could overpower it any day. Yet, here you are. No, it's Ernest, it's not funny! She was about to tear my bloody face off! Just then, Milo finally caught up with Max. You're alright? You look like you've seen the bloodhound. But I have seen it! It was big! It had spikes! And teeth and claws and spikes and teeth. It was in the bushes. It slid it out of the bed. Max gasped in horror as he saw the bloodhound sneak around, growling behind Milo. <gasps> oh my God! It's right there! Please, someone help! Suddenly, the growling stopped. Max still refused to even peek. Max, it's all right. Open your eyes. No, I won't look. He recognized that voice, but he still was a bit frightened. He slowly opened one eye. He looked down at the source, and then was surprised! There, sitting in front of him, was Lassie, smiling innocently and wagging her tail. What? <laughs> Lassie? Bambi, Lassie, the engines in their clothes erupted into hysterics. Poor Max felt very embarrassed. Uh, Soon enough, everyone made their way up to the big station in time for the fireworks. As they sat outside, Max decided to apologize. I'm sorry I was rude. I guess I let my sense fade away trying to look brave. I realize now how much of a fool I must have been not being cautious. We understand, Max. It is alright to try and be brave, but it never comes before common sense. I will admit, Lassie, you did put on a smashing performance. It could be a good scare. Almost too perfect, in fact. <laughs> Sorry. Couldn't help myself. If it were up to me, I'd say you'd make costume of the year. Everyone laughed and looked up at the night sky as the fireworks began. Later on, Max could look back and laugh about it. He would never forget the night he encountered the Bloodhound of Bromwich.
happy, happy Halloween, Halloween everyone. everyone.